Our guests in this segment include guests we've had previously on the program. And uh, guests I mistakenly thought were supposed to be on yesterday, but they were right and I was wrong. Maggie Cortez, whose real name is Margarita. Yes. And yes. Uh, Holly Hartman, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Great to have you here. Have you, either of you pulled jury duty in your day? No. Thank I goodness. have never been asked to be on jury duty. In your life? In my life, yeah. And I've got some years on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So, yeah, I don't know how that's no. ever happened. You've never even been called into the jury never. room and not getting in? Never. Wow. Oh, you're going to get Not even gotten the now. little letter that says you, because I would love to try it. You're going to get called It would be very interesting and... <laughs> You're going to give them ideas now. <laughs> no, no, no. You're Go. definitely getting called. I'm, I'm really busy right now. Week. I don't have time for two. <laughs> I got, when I was 23, I got called, and I had to go down. I was, I was uh, grew up in Pittsburgh, so I had to go down to the courthouse in Pittsburgh, and I sat there all morning long. There was like 100 of us, Wow. and nothing happened. They, they would call in, uh, what do you call them? Perp uh, the accused, right? Whatever they're called. Defendants. Defendants, thank you. They would call them in, and they would look at us, and they would make a decision. Did they want a judge trial or a juror trial? And every one of them that came in, they looked at us and they went, judge trial. <laughs> I don't know what we were doing wrong. <laughs> they didn't been, like the looks of us. You must have been mean mugging them. Like, really mad. You've got an event coming up on April the 22nd. Are you at Memorial Park again? Mm -hmm. yes. Go ahead, uh, Polly. Oh, Tell them about because right. this is your, your shindig. Okay. So, the um, oh, last year when I was here, I just barely started. Right. So mm -hmm. now I've got a little over a year under my belt, so I know a little more about what I'm talking about mm -hmm. this time. <clears throat> um, so this year, it's actually next Saturday, which mm -hmm. is April 22nd at War Memorial Park, again at the main pavilion, um, 11 to 4 p.m., we have a lot of exciting things going on. We have some guest speakers. This is about coffee. fair housing. Fair housing. Right. Fair housing. April is fair housing month for mm -hmm. those who don't know. Um, <laughs> so we have, I'm super excited. Last year we had a caterer, which was awesome. But this year we've decided to get some of our veterans and our, our Telemon programs involved. So our veterans are going to be doing all the grilling and cooking oh, nice. for mm -hmm. all of our guests. So mm -hmm. the food is free to all who attend. Um, so far we've got about... 12 or so community vendors to um, just provide information to, to all the of the attendees yeah. about, about community resources, mm -hmm. um, what's available to them. Everything is free, of course. We've got face painting, kids' activities. Super excited. We have a petting zoo this year. Oh, nice. Um, I mm -hmm. feel like I should give them a little shout out. So I saved their name here. You can find them on Facebook under Faithful Hearts. Faithful Hearts. Um, they are going to have six ponies for pony rides. They have a petting zoo. I need to bring um, my grandkids. <laughs> and, and a shovel. You should. Well, yeah. No, <laughs> well, I think they do that. That's that's not our job. They do all the setup, all the cleanup. I don't mm -hmm. want anything to do with that. <laughs> no, thank you. You have your standards. Um, <laughs> right? It, it, we're, standards. This fits in because we were talking about some of the you know more unpleasant jobs that we had when we were younger. So Yeah, not that <laughs> one. Yes. I'm not a farm girl. My mama was, but not me. Not you. Okay. <laughs> no, she's told me some of the stories about you know chopping the chickens heads off and <laughs> Ooh, none of that none of that <laughs> she's probably laughing at me right now like girl you yeah. really went there <laughs> right um no so they have um six ponies for pony rides for all the little ones mm -hmm. they have a petting zoo they have the widest range of animals for their petting zoo i've ever seen everything from um you know the normal pigs chickens goats bunnies. lambs bunnies you got any um, uh, alpacas I didn't see those, but they have hedgehogs, mm -hmm. um, lizards, like bearded dragons, leopard geckos, like just the most. All kind of stuff. Everything. Yeah. I think there's 40 different animals okay. um, for the petting zoo. So that's kind of exciting, too. Yeah. Who wants um, to pet a gecko? <laughs> Me, the, really? I do. Yeah. I used to have if one. If you've never I love held it. a lizard, there, you know, there's little kids going to be out there and be like, "Oh, I want to touch that." Yeah. You know, because you don't see a lizard right, every right. day, right? No. So exciting about that. We've got face painting. Um, mm -hmm. And and how many people did you get your first year doing this when you did it we last had year? Almost two hundred. Yeah. Almost two hundred. So you'll do even mm -hmm. better than that this year because oh, everyone's fine. turning out more this year. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if you think about last year, it seems like we were just kind of creeping out of the pandemic. Right yeah. now we're fully out right and right. i think people aren't as afraid to go out i think there was still some hesitation last year um but this year i feel like it's going to be Absolutely. awesome we're going to have a poetry reading last year we had the mayor come out and do the fair housing proclamation mm -hmm. uh, we're actually doing that at the city 
tonight with Nancy Strine from the yeah. City of Martinsburg. No, the city right. Council all, fair, all fair that housing is, proclamation. All that is fun stuff that you can do while you're there, but there's a, a deeper purpose to the to what you're serving here for the community in regards to fair housing. Mm -hmm. So so tell me exactly how you can help benefit people who who have to find out more about what may or may not be fair and what they're dealing with in life. So we have at our, our table, of course, set up, we have all of the information in regards to fair housing and then, of course, all of Telemann's other programs. What, what is fair but housing, fair first Fair housing of all. is everyone's right to enjoy equal, equally enjoy their housing. Access, um, yeah, without discrimination. It's, it, it's an anti-discrimination law. How, how might it be being discriminated and maybe not even know it? Right now. Um, let's say, uh, let's use a disabled person, for example. That's um, one of our biggest complaints. Yeah, and in we, the area. we get quite a few complaints. And, you know, part of Holly's job is to kind of sort through that, see if the client actually needs help filing a fair housing complaint. Oftentimes, what they feel is an anti discrimination kind of uh, complaint really is just more of, um, a beef maybe you know but you know it's really preventing you from having equal access right so let's lack say that of, of fair accommodation is that what it's a called? Reasonable, reasonable accommodation right so like, an, like an assistance animal and and okay yeah like and or if i um, you know need shower handles and the property manager's like absolutely not you know that's not an unreasonable accommodation you know mm -hmm. if i was asking for an elevator because i want to live on the third floor but i'm unable to make the stairs that's it puts an undue financial burden on the property owner or manager. So, um, but we do get quite a few, um, you know, complaints that come in through our online uh, submission forms that people can just go on there and say, you know, I feel like I was treated unfairly, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, disab the disability one is a big one, and it's not always the assistance animals or anything like that. It can run the gamut, you know, just a whole variety of things, Be uh, reasonable accommodation, um, you know, not, um, and the unreasonable accommodations can be anything from, you know, uh, my social security check comes on the 5th, but rent would be considered late on the third so would you be able to make that accommodation and so we just talk to the clients about what their rights are you know and and give them the information that hud provides as well then do you then get involved in helping them solve this case do you give them information or do you then go to the landlord and say hey so She's ultimately <laughs> ultimately our goal is education our grant is for education and outreach at this point mm -hmm. so our main purpose is to educate tenants, landlords, property owners, everyone alike as to their rights and responsibilities under the Fair Housing Act. Um, they should know anyways, but we don't want to just be out there and be like, oh, we got you. No, we want you to know what you should and should not be doing first. So that's ultimately the goal. But. Um, when someone does feel discriminated against where i come into play besides the education and outreach of course is like maggie said we listen to their story we how do you feel why do you feel discriminated do you have any evidence to back this up you know and if we feel like they have a reasonable okay you know um, you know situation or yeah. story or complaint i assist them in filing their complaint with hud HUD then takes over from there. I'm still the middle person, you know, the contact person, but um, HUD decides what happens. So, like one complaint that we filed, HUD chose not to investigate. Our local HUD office is in Philadelphia, so that's not exactly local, but we do have like the West Virginia Human Rights Commission, who is located out of Charleston. So a lot of our complaints, they refer to the Human Rights Commission, who then investigate the complaint and go through all of the legal processes there. And then they just kind of go back and forth with us. Do you have this documentation? Can you contact your client for this? So they kind of decide what happens from there and we just do what we're told at that point um, mm -hmm. but yeah so I mean the outcome can be a lot of things it could be you know it could go to court the tenant if their complaint is is found to be valid that valid they could there could be financial outcome there could be changes in the management the policies the ultimate goal Mediation. is to mm -hmm. change the policies and what they're doing to fix the problem for all of the tenants so it doesn't continue to happen. Yeah, because if, if it goes to court, then, and they, if the, pro let's say the property manager loses, I know they just upped 
here not too long ago the amount of the fine. Twenty six thousand dollars. How much? Twenty six thousand right? dollars yeah. for your first fine for right. your first violation. But their goal the really in the beginning is to you know provide education. Say look, don't do it again. You know it's not that we're that people are we're out there going let's get them right. Um, sorry about I that. I talk with my hands. So talk I with do. them up in the air, though. I, am, I know. I'm trying. I, oh, gosh. Sorry about that. <laughs> Matt Harvey. Yeah. Do you have the authority or ability to reach out to landlords prior to filing a complaint? We do. If we can help mediate it, and we have done so before. Mm -hmm. um, so everything we do is very, very confidential. But I can give sort of an example with no. Sure specific details so we had a tenant who was working with one of our our housing counselors he was doing you know the credit counseling how to do your budget all of that and he had mentioned that he had an issue he had a mental disability where he took medicine for that he was on a new medicine he had a reaction the reaction to the medicine caused a little episode at his his complex and the property owner or manager wanted specific documentation as to what medication he took so they could ensure that that issue wouldn't happen again before they renewed his lease and that's completely illegal they have no right to that information so we were able to the housing counselor stepped in and he was like holly i don't think this is right but what can you tell me so i provided him with all of the information he provided that information to the property manager and the tenant did get his his lease renewed so we didn't have to file a complaint we were able mm -hmm. to just educate the property manager on you're not allowed to ask what you medicines can't ask for those things for your mental disability and so instead of you know having to file a complaint and all of that we were able to kind of mediate it on our own and keep that from happening it, it seems like that landlords would would really embrace this program you would think so back in december we held a landlord workshop at the holiday inn we, we had good attendance there mm -hmm. um T once again to just inform them of their their rights and their responsibilities because it's not just the tenants that have the rights the landlords have the rights too of course so we want everyone to know what their responsibilities are how to be a good tenant but how to be a good landlord as well mm -hmm. is there guidelines on who you can serve um under my like my grant because everything we do well is, is there like income guidelines for like the it's any anybody, anybody that any anybody. tenant it doesn't matter what your income level socioeconomic level is you can if you feel that you were discriminated against whether it's based on your familial status race color religion national okay. origin um, sex color you know you you can certainly stop by and say look mm -hmm. I just feel like this you know I was steered in a direction you know or I wasn't allowed to apply for credit I mean it just it covers a lot you know I think one of the the biases that you're doing we good have, Matt. You're doing good. <laughs> one of the the things that we or recently that's come out is a um, appraisal bias in real estate um, in that uh, appraisers when they go out to appraise property values you know they will um, Houses that are um, occupied by black families will appraise lower than those of white families, right? Um, and so they'll whitewash the house. And they've done several um, uh, testing that they've done. Now, that, that's not happened here in this area. I think eventually they will because there's a big push from HUD about uh, uh, appraisal bias. So they're working very hard to try and uh, bring about more diversity within appraisers I think the one uh, and more education we had about in DC mm -hmm. where they had the term they call it whitewashing the um, black family owned the house they had an appraiser come in to see what they could sell it for the um, appraisal came in a lot lower than they had thought so they suspected it was because of their race so they had you know some white friends come in stand in for them take out like their family photos and whatnot and the house actually appraised for half a million dollars more Yikes. so I mean, yeah yeah it's definitely a thing we don't hear about that quite as much here but that's that yeah. was that was kind of local in dc um mm -hmm. So on the 22nd, that's a week from Saturday, you've mm -hmm. got uh, between 11 and 4 at War yes, Memorial sir. Park, a big community event. Anybody can come out, enjoy all the fun stuff that's going on there, food, and also learn more about fair housing and what yep. your rights are, mm -hmm. be you a landlord 
or a tenant. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, so what are some things that I can be asked when I'm filling out uh, an application to live in a place, rent a place or whatever, and what are some things that they can't ask me? Um, they can, for example, ask you about um, your income, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they might ask to do a background check, that's fine. Uh, but they really shouldn't ask you, you know, like um, questions that could be misconstrued as trying to fish for different kind of things like, oh, so oh. what church do you go to? Even though it may be a friendly conversation, really property managers need to be careful, especially if you're talking to somebody who might be Muslim or maybe it doesn't matter, you know, mm -hmm. if they're wearing a yarmulke or anything like that. Um, it could be seen as being kind of uh, where you're fishing. I, I, what is the word for that? Where it, I don't know. Fishing I, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like or you know. Um, in exam. regards to their disabilities, like you right. can ask, like, what specifically is your right. disability? Um, right. They can know that you have one. If it's a perceived disability, like if they're in a wheelchair or have a cane or maybe they're, you know, they're blind and they have their walking stick or they're seeing eye dog. If I'm filling out an application online, which a lot of, is of how these things are done, uh, and they say, and they ask, do you have any special needs or require any special assistance? Uh, is that legal? That is allowed. That's permitted. That's allowed because especially if you have some ADA compliant uh, units, you mm -hmm. know, that might say, yes, I have a wheelchair, I need, you know, a wider door or whatever. Um, but they can't ask, why do you need that? You know, they just, do you need that, right? Um, just, you have, so, and. So we do landlord workshops to mm -hmm. help landlords really protect themselves because at the end of the day, you know, um, we've had some hor horrific complaints, but and oftentimes they're the ones that are domestic violence or sex related uh, where it's uh, quid pro quo. You don't have money for your rent. You, can you come on a date with me? That and we've had that as well. So. Um, Typically, that's not from the big property management companies. It's usually sure. private property owners that are renting. Um, so can you ask about criminal background? <clears throat> you can still ask about that. Um, mm -hmm. There are people higher up in the legislature mm -hmm. that are working on changing that, but right now that is still that is yeah. Still and I think it's ask. within the last five years now. It used to be they could go back ten, then I think it was seven maybe. Now it's five. Oh, um, one other thing that's changed since last time we were here. Mm -hmm. So under um, the protected class of sex, it used to just be male and female, but mm -hmm. back in June after we were here last time, they added sexual orientation mm -hmm. under uh, the protected class of sex. So mm -hmm. now you also cannot be discriminated against or turned down due to your but sexual preference. I think that was an executive order. It's not mm -hmm. actually a law. So that could potentially change. Do you, the laws that have to be followed, are those federal or do some state laws overrule or override federal laws? So some states did not adopt that, the executive order. West so Virginia did. West Virginia did, yeah. So the, your LGBTQ community is protected under that uh, as far as discrimination. You can't discriminate in housing, in the sale or rental or purchase of housing um, based on if you're gay or not or, mm -hmm. you know. Do the rules apply to people who are renting a room in their home to someone? It is any financial If there's a financial transaction, transaction it's better if they have uh, some kind of documentation like a lease. Mm -hmm. The best thing Air landlords can have is a good lease. Airbnb? If you're paying for it. Yeah. So if you're but, paying but for it. But not a hotel. It's a hotel also. Hotel um, also. More so long-term stay hotels Your where they stay, rent yeah. to you for a longer mm -hmm. period of time it generally doesn't happen with like you know an overnight or a weekend stay it's more where we've seen and unfortunately it happens a lot more now than it ever used to but um people kind of long-term staying in hotels because of the shortage of housing available mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you've got you know families with children staying in the hotels for weeks or months at a time until they're able to find a rental or a house or mm -hmm. something like that but so yeah long-term stay hotels do fall under that as well how can folks find out more about the work that you're doing maggie and holly Telemon. Yes, <laughs> Telemon Corporation. If you know, you can go to our website, which is www.telemon.org. Uh, we're a community action agency nonprofit. Telemon's been in business for over 55 years now. 
um, and it's a great organization. You know, we have a huge Head Start presence in other in the other eleven states that uh, Telemann is there. But West Virginia is very unique, as always. I'm sorry. You're doing well. I'm sorry. Five, <laughs> uh, we're, not, we're at, we're at DefCon three now, Maggie. Like we're gonna make her sit on it's her T -E -L -A -L -N. hands. It's T E L A. Yes. M O N. Uh, yeah, Tell and I know a lot of people always think, oh, is that a telemarketing agency? I really wish we'd change it. It does sound like a telemarketing agency. <laughs> I know, I know. But, uh, yeah, you can check out our website there uh, or stop by our lobby. We're just right over there on Edwin Miller Boulevard. Um, Which at 67 Aiken Center, yeah. At the mm -hmm. old DMV. That's the old what DMV. all of our locals If you know. are local, yeah. local. You know <laughs> it used to be the old DMV. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks Thank for you. having us. I wish you great so weather great. on the 22nd. Yes, we need that. Thank you.